And we're back with some more power calculations. Today we have a guest. We have a guest on the show. It's a little tiny motor. Look at that. It's a little hobby motor. This is a little DC hobby motor. Um, the kind of device you might have in a, um, like a little motorized model car or something like that. Maybe a little fan. Of course, motors can be much bigger than this. Um, we're going to use an example with a much larger motor today. Um, you know, motors literally can be room size. They could dwarf an individual human being, all depending on you know, what the purpose of that motor is. But in any case, let's take um, sort of a basic kind of size you might see in your home. Um, let's talk about maybe a 120 volt AC RMS drive, right? That's the, the voltage applied to it, 60 hertz motor that's rated for 1.2 horsepower. So one horsepower is approximately equal to 745.7 watts. 746, right? That's a very typical value people will use. Um, Motors are always rated in terms of their output power, right? What are you getting at the shaft, so to speak, which is different from what you have to apply to it. In that case, we would like to know what the efficiency of this motor is. Now, you might recall, right, efficiency is your useful output power versus your input. That's always less than 100%. So what's the efficiency of this motor? Well, let's just say the efficiency is 90% or 0.9 as a factor. The other thing we would be interested in uh, would be the power factor. So this motor, most motors have you know, windings. They are inductive. Most motors are inductive. So this would have an appropriate power factor associated with it. And we'll just say this has a power factor of 0.9. 8.5 and it will be lagging. So it's an inductive sort of load. Right? Now what I would like to do here uh, would be to figure out a power triangle for this and ultimately figure out how much current it takes to get this thing to produce the 1.2 horsepower. All right? Well the very first thing we're going to have to do is turn our uh, horsepower rating into a wattage value. So we're just going to use our um, conversion value here. So the power in watts is going to be 1.2 horsepower times 745.7 watts per horsepower. All right, and that power is going to work out to approximately 895 watts. All right, so that's the rated output power. Now I want to know what the input power is to get that. In other words, we have to consider what's going on with the efficiency. So we rearrange this equation to get the input power. All right, so the input power is simply the output power divided by that efficiency. Or in our case, 895 watts divided by the efficiency expressed as a factor in other words, 0.9. And the associated input power works out to 994 watts, right? nearly a kilowatt. That's what it takes on the way in. Now, again, that's the real part of this. If we were going to draw a power triangle, we know one little piece of it, all right? um, which we'll get to in just a sec. But let's figure out the other pieces. So what's the apparent power on this? Okay. Well, we have a couple uh, things we can do. Probably the most straightforward thing is to simply take the power and divide it by the power factor, the true power divided by the power factor. Because right? after all, power factor is equal to P over S. So we just slightly rearrange that equation a little bit, take our 994 watts, divide it by our power factor, which is 0.85, And the apparent power coming in is 1170. 
volt amps. All right. Remember, not watts. All right. How do I find Q? Because that's the third leg of our triangle. A couple different ways we can do this. Uh, we could use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Right? S is the hypotenuse, so S squared has got to equal Q squared plus P squared. So if we rearrange that, Q would have to equal the square root of S squared minus P squared. Right? That's one way to do it. Another way would be to simply find out what your angle is. In other words, what is the uh, impedance angle of the circuit, which, because the power factor is the cosine of theta, right, you, what you could do is simply say, well, what's the arc cosine of the power factor? Right, so the arc cosine of 0.85 actually gives us the impedance angle. Right? It turns out to be 31.8 degrees in this case. Right. So you could do that as well. You could say Q is equal to uh, S times the sine of theta. Your choice. Um, and if you were just to do this, we can just plug in uh, the 1170, square it, right? then grab your power value, which is the 994, square that, or and take your uh, 1170 times the sine of um, uh, 31.8. Q will work out to 617 volt amps reactive, 617 var. All right, great. Okay, remember what we were looking for here was the current. That's where we wanted to go with this. So we've run out of room there, so let's just pop up here a little bit. Uh, the current. And again, we want to find the RMS current here. Um, we would simply note that apparent power is the product of current and voltage. So we just simply rearrange that, and the current would have to equal S divided by uh, the associated voltage. So what do we have there? Oops, make that look a little nicer. So uh, the apparent power is 1170. All right, that's VA. And then the voltage, this is 120 volt, you know, normal off the wall kind of thing. So we divide those out and we come up with, because this is all RMS, the voltage is RMS obviously, um, we come up with nine and three quarters amps. All right, so that's the current that would be required to come in here. Now if we're gonna draw a power triangle for this, we wind up with something that looks like this. Here's our real part. This is the um, 994, all right, right there. So here's our 994 coming out here. Uh, this is inductive, all right, it's lagging, all right, it said uh, it was lagging, so that's inductive. That's at 617, so let's see, that's going to be about 60 ish percent of that, maybe something like that, All right? So this is P, this is Q at 617, and then S is sitting out like this at 1170 uh, VA. And then this angle in here is the 31.8. Okay, beautiful. Now, that sort of completes this situation. At the close of the prior video, we had mentioned that we could do power factor correction. All right, power factor correction. The idea here was to reduce the current draw. All right. So the 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 power factor correction. The idea here uh, would be to introduce a Q value that's the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. In other words, I want to introduce a Q that's capacitive, but also equal to 617 uh, VAR. All right, just capacitive this time. So this and this will cancel out. S will collapse down onto the P vector. In other words, S will be 994 um, volt amps or watts. It would be the same thing at that point. All right. 
Okay, how do we get that? Well, practically speaking, as far as uh, a motor is concerned, you know, back to our little device over here, what we would do is take a capacitor and just put it across these terminals. All right? That's a lot easier than trying to put something in line, certainly. Of course, a motor this small, we probably wouldn't bother with power factor correction, but in something a little bit more sizey, right? We certainly would. Okay, so how do we how do we figure out an appropriate capacitor value? Right? Because saying it's 617 VAR is only the only the beginning. I have to come up with an actual capacitance value. You know, so many microfarads, right? That's where ultimately we're gonna head. Well, if we remember the basic power calculation, you know, P is equal to V squared over R. The uh, reactive version of this would be Q is equal to V squared over X. In our case, that's X sub C. So rearranging this, X sub C would have to equal our RMS voltage squared divided by whatever Q is. So our RMS voltage is 120 volts. Q has to be equal, so that's going to be 617. And, you know, and we know by inspection it has to be a capacitor, so we can just plug these in. Don't worry about, you know, plus J, minus J kind of stuff. We know it's got to be a capacitor in this case. Um, and when we grind this out, we will come up with a value of a magnitude of approximately 23.34 ohms. All right. Great. Now we can use our uh, capacitor equation. All right, for the uh, x sub c, I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit, 1 over 2 pi f times the x sub c. So you plug your values in here, 2 pi f, uh, that was 60 hertz standard line frequency, times the x sub c, which we just found to be 23 and a third roughly, and c will turn out to 114 microfarads. So that's what we need for power factor correction, right? That's what we need for power factor correction. Assuming, you know, the load doesn't change. Assuming that this thing is running at rated output. You know, it's possible, obviously, for motors to be running at less than rated output, in which case we wouldn't have as much power and the correction factor might need to be a little bit different. That's um, a little bit more complicated. Uh, one way of doing that is to have a bank of capacitors that can be intelligently sort of um, cycled through to get just what you need. Um, but in this sort of fixed case, this is what we need. All right. Now let's go back and compare and see just how good this is. Because after all, we initially, um, when we initially looked at this, we figured out that there was a current of nine and three quarter amps. So now the question is, with power factor correction, what is the new current, All right? So the new value of I, the corrected value of I, would simply be the apparent power divided by the applied voltage. Well now, because we have power factor correction, the um, apparent power and the real power are the same. So this S turns into the real power, which is 994 watts. All right, so you could either call that 994 watts or 994 volt amps. I'll be persnickety about it and call it volt amps since it is S. But we have to understand that in this case, um, the, the power factor falls to, or excuse me, changes to one, the phase angle falls to zero. So V, of course, was 120 volts. And grinding through, we find the result is approximately 8.28 amps. Hey, cool. Look at the difference, right? Nine and three quarters versus about eight and a quarter. So we have saved um, a considerable amount of input current. Now, if you took the ratio of those two things, 8.28 amps divided by 9.75 amps, what do you think you come up with? Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a factor of 0.85. Hey, where have we seen that before? 
Yeah, it's the power factor. All right, that makes perfect sense. Because after all, if power is the product of current and voltage, your voltage in this system is fixed. So if you were able to reduce the apparent power, in other words, if you were able to bring it down to the true power value, right, collapse that vector, then it must be the case that the current would have changed by that factor, would have changed by the power factor, because right, it went from 0.85 to unity. And there you have it. So if you, you know, if you have a really, a really bad power factor, if you had something um, much smaller than this, you know, if you had like 0.7, let's say, you know, you're talking about uh, uh, drawing only 70% of the current that you would under, um, you know, uh, the original scenario. If you had a, a power factor of around 0.7, what you're saying is um, that angle would be pretty close to 45 degrees in your real and your uh, uh, imaginary, your, your P and your Q would be about the same size. Um, so the, the smaller this value gets, the worse the situation. Right? We would like to have a situation where the power, uh, the power factor is in fact unity. Okay? And that's pretty much everything for this problem.